Hey X-Plane Pilots, welcome to another Airfoil Labs King Air 350 tutorial. In this video, we'll look at handling an engine failure during takeoff. The procedure that I will go over straight from the King Air 350 airplane flight manual and is how we are taught in the simulator. The V1 cut, as it is commonly referred to during simulator training, is practiced and reviewed extensively in all multi-engine type rated aircraft, whether you are flying a King Air or Boeing 747. The goal of this video is to cover the engine failure procedure in the King Air 350 during the takeoff roll at or after V1. Multi-engine aerodynamics, in theory, will not be covered. Disclaimer: This video is a high-level overview for desktop flight simulation entertainment purposes only and does not represent or replace any aircraft training in the real world. Any opinions expressed are solely my own and do not express the views or opinions of the airplane manufacturer or airfoil labs. We are lined up on runway 30 left at the San Jose International Airport in California. The weight and balance and performance have been calculated using the in-game application. The current weather is VMC, V-speeds are set, and all required checklists are complete. Here is the checklist procedure per the airplane flight manual. You'll notice the first four steps are bold-faced, which implies they are memory items or immediate action items. These must be done in a timely fashion by memory without reference to a checklist following the relevant failure. All right, let's get going. Auto feather lights on. Point seven five jazz up for the airspeed alive. Sixty knots. Without looking at the engine gauges, we should be able to recognize which engine has failed by the yawing moment and quickly react accordingly by applying the appropriate rudder input to maintain runway heading. And a quick glance at your engine instruments will verify the failed engine. At VR, slowly rotate the aircraft to approximately 10 degrees pitch up. When you hear a positive rate call and or see a positive rate indication on your VSI, select the gear up. Gear up. Gear indicates up. Continue adjusting the pitch attitude for V2, which is 111 knots in our case. Verify the failed engine's propeller has feathered. You could look outside to see that the propeller is in the feathered position and is slowly windmilling indicating a successful auto feather. If in low visibility or night conditions, you can verify the propeller gauge is showing a zero RPM. Ultimately, your climb performance or lack thereof will tell you if the propeller has properly auto feathered or not. If the propeller has not auto feathered, quickly move the associated propeller lever to the feather position. At this point, the four critical memory items are complete. Apply enough rudder input to place the ball one-third to half width outside of the center of the slip indicator to minimize drag while achieving the best climb performance. Use the rudder trim as necessary to ease your workload. Assuming your flight director is on, select indicated airspeed mode to lock in a climb at V2. Select heading mode to maintain runway heading. At 400 feet AGL above ground level, slowly lower the nose a few degrees and let the airplane accelerate to 125 knots. If your takeoff involved flaps set to approach, raise the flaps at a minimum airspeed of V2 plus 9. When you've reached 125 knots, reselect indicated airspeed mode to continue your climb. Engage the yaw damp and autopilot to reduce your workload. From 400 feet AGL to 1,500 feet AGL, it's simply maintaining 125 knots to your assigned altitude and runway heading, or the required lateral navigation if you are following a special engine out procedure. In the real world, we would also declare an emergency with ATC. At 1,500 feet AGL, if the autopilot is not engaged at this point, I would highly advise doing so for the sake of running the checklist. 
At this point, we would run the entire checklist from the top to ensure we have completed all items. When instructed to move fuel and prop levers, carefully and slowly verify the correct levers are moved as shutting down your good engine would result in becoming a glider. All right, thanks for watching. Again, that's what we call a V1 cut during pilot training. There is a lot going on for sure when it comes to turboprop aircraft. Jet aircraft are much easier to manage in situations like this. I hope you learned something new along the way. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. Take care. See ya.